Hey guys, uh, welcome to another Brit Lane vlog. This is going to be a little bit of a short check-in um, video. Um, got my head cam over there, I could realistically put a bit of head cam on today. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's weekend, I'm just coming and I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, we're on this uh, brick plot again, as you, as you... I'll show you the rendered one I, uh, we did. It's uh, about a day or two away from Pan now. Uh, but yeah, I've not been filming much. It's a lovely day today. It's a lot more mild this year, uh, this year's summer than this time last year when I was, was doing a uh, was that Gleason job with Connie Bricks this time last year, and it was fucking just nasty. I think now actually I was building some garages. I think timber frame last year, but it's a lot, it's a lot mild, a lot more comfortable. Obviously I'm a lot fitter than, than last year, so you can cope with the heat a bit better. Fucking, okay. there's a bit. That's going on, fuck it. I'm sick of it getting in my, in my fucking, uh, in my face. Uh, but yeah, I'm just recording on the phone today. I can't really, I'm not really being asked to film. A lot of people aren't allowed to film on YouTube now. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, the creators, Charlie, uh, um, I think Changster, he doesn't record much anymore. I don't really watch many of anyone. Um, I don't really watch any, one bad Izzy the Bricky now and again. Uh, uses a little trowel. I don't know if he got, I know he got it ages ago and didn't like it, but he seems to like it now. Um, this is the trowel I'm still using. I've got another trowel, this is like my pick and dip trowel and block work trowel. Um, I've got another trowel I use for clay bricks, long spread. It's a bit bigger than this, um, but I use this pretty much 60-70% of the time at the moment because uh, you know, it depends how I'm feeling. It depends how the gear is. If the gear's stiffer, I'm using this. Uh, I've got my bigger trowel. I'll show you that uh, in the coming videos. I'm experimenting still with that, so I'm not gonna put it on the YouTube's if it's not something I'm fully on board with. But this, definitely a cheap, accessible trowel, bucket trowel. Cut it down. I'm gonna modify this a little bit. Uh, but yeah, check it out. So this is a nice little job. It's coming to the end in the next next month or two for us um, but that's this in the this in the distance that three plot that's what I've just been building took it over from floor but it was a mess about really rendered plots 90 mil blocks as well you know cause it's got a brick if you can see the below it's brick below um, n terrible to build you know what I mean especially super terrible to make it for making money anyway uh, but we're back on here back on this uh, this brick plot uh, zoom out yeah uh, it's full fill insulation, we took the uh, brickwork 4 course higher than uh, joist, so it's level. We just hook as, as lines on for this beam fill. Uh, you know, I lay it freehand, uh, obviously just iron it down really. Uh, it's full fill insulation, I find, you know, if you clean, to clean your snots off effectively, you want to really leave them a day. Um, so if any snots drop on your insulation and you can't get any wood in, uh, which I'd be all day cutting timber to slide timber down and the way the tyres work sometimes you can't get it in You want to leave your gobble a day to go off on the insulation then then pick it off Stops it going all, down, all the way down the side of the insulation stops it filling the cavity, but yeah, I'm just doing this um, The floor still not been propped, but because it's only uh, a small little pair we are going we can stack them stack the blocks a few high before it's propped so um, Paul and Dean will be in on Monday with me and we're gonna, I'm gonna set off. Uh, hopefully today I can get four sides of beam fill. I'll not get the, the middles take longer, but I'm gonna get four sides of beam filled on, and uh, and then I might resume this video Monday as the start of me on actually something where I can make a wage, you know, better than day work really. Um, but yeah, here's another tool I've been using. I've had it for a lot of years, that's my dad's Makita. If DeWalt did one, I'd buy one, but it's amazing. I cut one side of a Connie block and just crack it, and there you go. You can see what I've done there, cut most of the way through, get a crack, sorted. Um, but yeah, so I basically still, even though this is full fill insulation, I still brush the cavity, um, especially when you can't get down to point the block still brush the cavity. I know on some jobs people are taking, a lot of guys were taking the brickwork first. You know, 
it's good, but at the moment with the ready mix we're using, the the, the gear in, the, the gobble ain't strong enough for at least a week uh, to be going brickwork first. You want to be on silos if you're doing brickwork first. Um, we ready mix. It's probably essential. You do what work first, and you've got to take up stuff up no higher than four course of walk on ready mix, and then you can take your gay balls up full height in a day. Um, but you've just got to make sure your bricks are dry. These are very dry bricks, luckily. Uh, and I'd recommend building big corners, you know, don't take flanks up with ready mix. It's just ready mix in the in the gear to, for speed, in the gear for speed, but we're only here until we've got that to pan. I've got like a day to square that to pan. And then we'll be on here for, you know, t a couple of weeks to pan probably. So I reckon we're here for a month, including the top outs, I reckon. Um, but it depends how much graft I put in, you know. I'm thinking... I'm thinking with a given speed with everyone in, um, I, a day after today, probably a day, two days, all the watt work complete uh, and the brick work squared around. I still haven't, uh, we didn't have, there was no heads on the back, but this was a bit of a rush job. Um, the heads are here for this, but they're archers. The archers over the front, so I just avoid the uh, I avoid the uh, the time-consuming bits like cutting round archers and and you know the time-consuming bit like beam fill. You know guy, the guys don't really want to work any Saturday, so I'll be just coming in doing the slow bits on a Saturday. And our labourer does about does he ideally wants four days, so you know we get him in. We me and Dean smashing. Dean does about four days as well, uh, so we you know the interchange and I, I basically do the slow the slow time consuming laborious work where you don't earn any money on my own um, or if Dean can be doing something else I'll do the slow stuff while he runs some stuff in you know that's especially with the prices tightening up the prices have dropped you know it's ten, five ten percent overall and with the extra stuff we're doing brushing cavities uh, we've got a staple of four inch damp around the around the edge of the edge of the floor uh, that's why there's a shit ton of four inch up here. It all slows us down, so you've got to really adapt your gang and adapt your way of working. So, hey guys, welcome to the voiceover part of the video. This is a little bit of a just face on angle, me doing a bit of beam fill. First little stretch down the back. Um, you know, laying the block free and just you iron it down with the line. The lines on set the cavity. Um, I always reset the cavity, uh, especially on that last course of block when you're squaring to underside a joist. You want to try to set your cavity a little bit over there. I know you're sort of laying your block slightly out of plumb to pull it, pull it to the cavity size, but that's all they're bothered about now. An HBC cavity size, um, you know, uh, making sure, you know, clean cavities, no snaps on insulation, etc., etc. Um, make sure your damps are all turned up, this, this, and that. I'm trying to incorporate more tips so you'll see later on in the video I give some more tips you know how to make your work a bit better how not to get pulled by an HBC um, because that's uh, you know apart from time scale of how quick you are as a gang and apart from um, you know you know just general quality of your face work cavities is where it's at nowadays HBC um, you know you want to score as high as possible on an HBC inspection sort of thing and that's basically what site manager is looking for that's what keeps you in a job uh, if you're doing nice neat work and you're not getting pulls on by an HBC you're pretty much you know you're pretty much good to go on a lot of sites now you know stuff ain't gonna fly like it used to be in the boom you know you can't be getting pulls anymore that's why you'll see I've slightly slowed down to just make stuff a little bit that little bit neater um, brushing cavities etc pointing block work fully all the time you know taking that extra time cleaning insulation this this and that um you know all little things you know double checking just to make things uh you know what they want uh, <laughs> oh sorry i'm yawning um it's pretty much essential now you know in, in these recession times we're effectively in um you have to slow down a little bit you know i've I'm not always trying to hit a thousand bricks. Sometimes I do it. Uh, sometimes I do more, but it, it's all about moderation, especially in the summer months. You know, we're starting to get to the 
more hot hotter time of the year and people a lot of bit later say oh it's you know it's hotter you know we're working more but you actually probably get less done in these hotter months you know you can't work for as long i'm doing no more than eight hour days now i sometimes do a late one but that's very rare i'll work actually over eight hours now um because of the heat because of the fatigue i'm currently i've got about three mouth ulcers as we're speaking right now just because of lack of sleep i'll add um, you know, do pulling his all night is is a is a regular thing now. I've had a bit of outside stress as well. Um, not you know nothing to do with work that slowed me down a little bit. You know, our lad got sort of set back a year from his uh, start in school. So, um, you know, they said he needed to go to a special facility sort of thing, a special school. But we're still fighting that. We're still trying to bring him on, and you know, it ain't nice to hear and. I know people take it for granted when I say in my videos I've been up all night or I've not slept, but, you know, there's a reason. I don't really go into much detail about it. I don't like, you know, fucking users, using anything as an excuse. There's plenty of people, plenty of uh, people out there with kids with, with, with additional sort of needs. And, uh, you know, like I say, I work around it, and especially for our job, it is performance-based. You have got to manage your stress level. You have got to manage your your sleep as well there's one thing that you'll struggle to perform on low sleep you know i i've managed a lot of years because of the support system i've got with mel and my my old man who used to work with me he's he's a massive part of helping uh helping uh one day one or two days a week uh, with our lad to keep me working he helped me keep me going when i was on the trowel he kept me going with gear now he's keeping me going with you know relieving me a night's sleep here and there where i can get i can get eight hours solid but yeah, I do struggle sometimes when I'm uh, only getting four in, or uh, sometimes I get maybe two or three. You know, if I if I get an especially bad all night, if, if uh, me and Mella alternate shifts, and uh, she's taking on the brunt f full forceness. But he, uh, you know, it is you know it's been a little bit of a stressful time. This, this the school transition, and uh, you know, he's gone. We've gone a little bit backwards there. We, he he uh, currently we're getting three days a week, uh, three eight-hour days at nursery now. He, he doesn't have even get three two-hour days or three-hour days. Gone a little bit backwards there, so, because uh, he was going to a private nursery and now he's got to go to a public one, but they can't accommodate for what he needs, this, this and that. So, it's yeah, it's a bit annoying. It has, it has definitely impacted me at work, but I'm sort of getting my mojo back a little bit, sort of uh, de-stressing a little bit at work as well, if you can see. Um, you know, with the way I'm working, I do work a little bit more calculated now. I'd, I try not to solely rely on speed, and uh, as I said before, you know, giving extra allowances for like, time allowances for just putting that extra bit of neatness into your work. You know, yeah, you're gonna earn a bit less, little bit less money on odd weeks when you've got to do this sort of, you know. Uh, getting pots ready for inspection effectively because this is going to get inspected on the Tuesday I'll probably finish off the beam fill on Monday uh, I didn't, you know, a little bit of spoiler I didn't get it all done but, you know you've just got to put up an extra bit of time stapling damps, you know, cleaning cavities it's just, uh, it's what it is so um, you know, I'm starting to uh, things are starting to click into place a lot, a lot bit better as well I, I make less mistakes overall if I go by quarterly I assess my like, earnings, I assess my, uh, you know, how many th times I've had to revisit plots or fix things I've done wrong, which is unavoidable, no matter, we're all human. Um, but yeah, it it's happens less and less and less as the uh, months go by. Uh, I drop less and less block, <laughs> less and less bollocks as the, each year rolls on, so. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah, there's, there's not much more to say about this, you know, beam fill. It's slow. The Connie bricks, are, the Connie uh, blocks, and Connie and obviously concrete briquettes. Are, I try to always bomb my briquettes over my block. I don't like to straight joint my briquettes. It's another one of my peeves that I try to always keep. You know, um, but whereas you know you've got it, it's very so important as well with this new uh, stiff damp. You get it trapped properly, so you know it's covering the lintel, but it's not too much over where it's pushing your brick. Because this is I've had a problem before over the back of a pair. The damp pushed my first course of bricks out. The lintel won't set back right, and you know there's a lot of things where you know you have to leave extra allowances for this stiff damp. Same with Connie blocks as well. So important if you're building an house out of Connie blocks or fiber light blocks or 
or lightweight concretes, you have to make sure because they take more a lot longer to cut. You've got to make sure that your bond is bang on, um, because they do tend to come more true to size these than the thermalites do. But with thermalites, you can just quickly trim them. It don't really matter with your bond so much uh, as it does on the, as it does on Connie's because Connie's take a lot longer to cut. So and they're arguably uh, slower to work with because they don't go off as quick. So you have to you can only do four course, four or five course max in a day, uh, especially with ready mix as well. Ready mix is, is slow anyway, uh, using ready mix. Um, so yeah, uh, still using the tubs as obviously on the floor because I'm working low down off the tubs low down. Um, I've got a little string on all of them for when I'm working solo, but normally they get filled up uh, by Paul with the buckets. Or if me and Dean are ever working, just us two uh, in. Uh, Dean will probably sometimes, depending on uh, how he's feeling, his shoulders I think a bit messed up at the moment. So he's he's mainly just he's just mainly odd carrying when he comes in. He he just spreads for me. That speeds. If you if someone spreading for you on Connie blocks makes you basically aim at double the speed. I get him spreading them, perping blocks up. And you can lay him at like two or three times the speed. Uh, I think we did about 500 block the other day when it was just spreading for me. So, because of you know, it, you know, because of his speed at laying blocks compared to mine, uh, it's probably quicker for a lot of the time. Him just spreading for me, uh, whereas on thermalites, you know, because you can't spread it in advance because it's thermalite, you know, it's quicker in laying them than than that means that means than uh, him spreading. So, you've got to find your strengths of the people you work with, you know. Uh, and uh, find that you know, and always, always set them tasks where they're strong at, rather than setting them tasks that they're weak at. You know that they're slow and laborious at. Paul does a lot of the pointing up now when he's in as well, so he likes to rub up as well. So, um, you know, Dean's left to mainly lay, which has brought him on quite a lot uh, in the past uh, few months. With uh, Paul's been with us, well, I ain't got him much on camera because you know, it just I don't film that often, so. Well, I will do when I get sort of more motivated to film all the time. I'll start getting everyone in on camera, and when I start getting when my head's together, you know, when stuff outside of work sort of comes in, comes uh, falls into place, I'll be less stressed to you know to actually be able to record at work a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, I'm just focusing mainly on getting in and getting some gear down and going home. Really, I've been working a little bit less than usual, so. So yeah, it'd be a shame when this job uh, finishes, and because uh, we've only got another month or so on here, I reckon. Um, you know, everyone chats on here. Everyone's pretty friendly. Yeah, I've been on the last couple of jobs. Not many people speak. You know, I call it the owls. You know, um, you know, this is because obviously with I've found obviously as the years go on, you know, I'm working around. I'm twenty eight in two weeks. And I'm working around people who, who are at minimum 48. And uh, there's like a 20-year generational age gap of bricklayers because obviously I've gone through recession, you know, and price has been shit for bricklayers for a, were a lot of years when I started. So, you know, a lot of people didn't get into bricklaying. There's not a lot of apprentices anymore. Uh, you know, not a lot of guys my age getting after it with young families and that, you know. I've got a fucking... I've got a fresh mortgage... You know, I've, I remortgage next year and, you know, I've got bills to pay. I've got fucking two cars to pay for, etc. you know. Um, you don't run into people very often with, you know, that sort of, you know, who are in at that stage in their life because you're normally working around on bricklayers who are 20, 30 years old than you. So it is no noticeable, you know. Hopefully these videos sort of encourage more young guys to get into it. Um, because obviously, effectively, in the next 20 years, a lot of these guys I'm working around now, the next 15 years, are going to be fucking retired, so either bricklaying's going to be one of them fucking trades that suddenly you can't find a bricklayer and they're going to pay you fucking ridiculous amounts of money to do it, or, you know, um, you know, we'll import people from abroad, you know, there'll be more Americans coming over here, more people from Australia, Coming over here, but I think most of the Australian bricklayers originally came from the UK anyway. Um, you know, obviously bricklaying originated in the U in the in the, the UK. I think it was invented. I think building with bricks was was it invented in Britain? I think it was. Fuck knows. I'm not a historian, but I'll have to look at more of my history of bricklaying. But yeah, it's 
Uh, this site's pretty good. Everyone's similar speed, or you know, on set days I'll probably use the most amount of gobo if I'm going absolutely crazy mode. But it's uh, it's nice. It's nice for once, not getting rushed rushed off my tits. So yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, could we send this little clip and I'll uh, see you in the rest of the video. Right, so I'm just going to run this beam full in. Uh, I've already done two sides, uh, one side with the beams, one side with less beams. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you a little bit of footage now about, about doing them. Um, there's a few things you want to you know, keep an eye out for. So you want to keep an eye out for straight joints over your lintels. So you want to uh, make sure you're not straight jointing to your, your block work piers below when you go over your lintel. And the same again, you don't want to be straight jointing any straight out when the floor goes on and you have to beam fill right round. Not been given a price for, for that on this job but on the other job uh, I did do that so you know we had a price for it. Um, it depends job to job to job you know sometimes you get a patching price sometimes you don't. Um, I've there's, there's a history over the years of me saying yes to doing stuff and not being getting paid for it so um, you know as a rule of thumb now if you're in a price for it I don't really do it and there's nothing wrong with saying no. Um, Especially, you know, if, you know, if you're experienced, if, you, if you've got a lot of years of experience, you just got to do what you know you're going to get paid for. I know a lot of younger guys, you, you know, like newer improvers, less experience, you just have to say yes to any sort of work, you've just got to take it. Um, there's nothing wrong with saying no if, you know, there's any query you're getting paid for anything. So if you don't get a price sheet for it, don't do it pretty much. You know, uh, biggest top tip, I think, I'd say for 20. 2023 because um, I did a lot of shit last year that and I, I got paid for most of it you know but it's only it only takes you to not get paid for one job it might only be a few hundred quid but then you're losing a day there and there's so many days you lose anyway with things out of your control you don't want to be losing money for needlessly um, so yeah I've got over these beams uh, I've, I've marked out the blocks here I'll show you so as you can see um, what I meant about straight joints is we've got a little piece in here that I'd put in obviously when I was squaring it up you want to make sure you go half bond over that so you want you know ideally on block work you want you know 225 lap you know 220 lap but you can get away with 150 120 basically it's a bit windy today uh, so basically <laughs> Uh, yeah, you want to try to get as close to one uh, two 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 five as you can, but one fifty or hundred will will suffice for getting uh, over your over your lintels. A lot of the time you can't see down there the bond anyway, but I've had big picky gaffers, you know, um, pick it, pick fault, you know, and you don't want to leave anything to chance these days because I've been pick fault with enough, and there's stuff now you'll just not get away with in this uh, sort of tight recession sort of time we're working in. Up to scratch with everything. So now I'm going to notify that block by putting a brick next to it. And I know that's where I need to lay that block. Um, same with over here. I'll grab one of these bricks that's just holding the damp. Um, I've got some more tips for this stiffer damp as well. Um, the stiffer damp is difficult to deal with, but uh, I'll go into that later. The same again, we'll just put the block. This is where the other one goes right up to this beam. We'll put a the brick there and notifies where that block needs to go. So yeah, we're going to get over this. Uh, should, be, should be off for one at this stage, so I'm happy. All sat up I did over this uh, shoot. Uh, I got me a uh, grill rod with the uh, water. I normally carry a little hype satchel. It's got my essentials in it. Uh, but I couldn't find my attachment for the little grill pod. Grill pod so. Right, the tub's out.
now it's ten past two. I'm a bit later than I wanted to be today. I wanted to be off about half one, but I, uh, I stayed a little bit longer just to get these little corners up. Uh, I'll show you what I've done, and uh, yeah, check it out. So I said earlier in the video this might be a continuation of another video, but this is going to be another video on its own. So basically, I've gone round and I've set all the bond uh, all the way round. So that is that is what the plot works, block and block, and then identical. Uh, all the corners so uh, at the back it goes block on the back straight and then block return so I set this plot out originally uh, block 100 mil piece and then block but it was slightly wrong you know I've, I've done I've gone back to using my 900 times tables I've sacked my gauge tapes off and just gone back to doing it the old-fashioned way 900 times table and now I know this works from blocks all the way through without putting briquettes in it this plot I took over, took off, uh, took over at Joist, uh, was set out a certain, set out how it was set out, you know, it wasn't set out to work blocks, it had, it had uh, movement joints in and stuff like that in it, um, it made it a lot slower. And the same again with the internal block work, I didn't set it out, reset it like I should have done on this course, so, uh, as you can see, that now works pretty much half bond all the way through the front and back up to your party walls and bomb these party walls in because it's the same material block um, one's just a slightly different uh, density to the other uh, but I've been using the uh, heavier blocks when I'm ever just doing one course all the way around because it doesn't matter what it's the same material I just use the heavier blocks so I've only got to get one pack of blocks up so I just got all the heavies up just for this one course and we can go back to the lighter weight blocks on the outside walls then uh, it's just, you know, it doesn't really affect the, the build at all, it just makes it quicker and gear, getting your gear up, so I've been round, pointed everything that I can get to and then I've brushed all the cavities and all of the, I've filled all the beam fill with what I can uh, uh, flush it all up. I'm going to do a video on pointing gloves, I'm a very big fan of the pointing gloves. Um, I use just my normal gloves for pointing, I never used to point block work, Dean used to do it, um, but I've pretty much, you know, going to get used to using a pointing glove for the external especially when there's insulation covering it and open cavity and, you know a brush doesn't always clean your cavity very well you know a little bit I missed here a little snot still still uh, still uh, nice and soft even days later but um, you know a, br a, br a brush you know don't always get your cavity 100% it's not always good you know you need sometimes a stiffer brush or a glove for hand does a really good job as well. Um, so yeah, so on Monday, if everyone's in, I only account for, I only account for as only. I'm, I'm still technically. I'll just go back to me. Although there's three of us in on a set day, I'm still technically a one-on-one -on -one because I can't always count on everyone to be in. Uh, but I just, I, I do prefer working as a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, we have, we have, we have Paul in our labourer just to get us in front, and he likes doing it that way. And uh, but. Having everyone in all the time, you know, they're in. T you can't really earn as much money. That's pretty much, you know, it's pretty much. You could beat around the bush and say whatever you can, but you can earn more money as a one-on-one. -on -one. You know, you'll have, you know, video, you know, guys on YouTube saying you want so many in the gang or this, this, and that. There's nothing that beats one-on-one -on -one for just earning on any job. You know, these these sites I've been on, they're not always the easiest of houses. It's not always the best materials. Not always the best you know, uh, layout of plots or, you know, you haven't always got everything there to make the maximum amount of money possible, so sometimes, you know, just having two of you in, just me and a labourer, or me and Dean running in uh, with gear in front of us is a lot better than always having three of us because you have to turn out a lot more work to make three wages than you do two. So, you know, although it works 90% of the time with three of us, it's nice that so everyone, you know, I'm flexible to where as long as someone's in with me, or if there isn't anything going this set day, I'll say to the guys, it's not, you know, we've got no insulation or gob aren't turned up, that's it. But everyone's happy with that. Flexible to where there's nothing for them to go out on a set day and they've got the money, they've burned enough that they want to earn in the week. You know, most everyone wants to get in at least four days. Three to four days, everyone's happy. Uh, and now, obviously, today, this week, I've had to do six. But getting, uh, making up for last week with no insulation. That rendered the plot one a good earner, you know. Uh, and then I'll be back in front, and then there's always wages on it. You don't want to be overbooking, you know. I've heard of gangs working a week for free and stuff, and stuff like that. You know, they've got the books, but... 
We don't do. I don't do that. That's not the way to go. On. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, no run tonight. I've been focusing on my body weight, uh, lifting a little bit more. My chest still sore, and triceps, and biceps are still sore from the other day training because uh, I haven't been getting optimal sleep. As i am been a bit run down. I'm not recovering the same. Obviously, calorie deficit isn't helping. Um, but I'm not really having to try and, you know, diet as such. I just make healthier choices. So, um, I want to show you guys some more stuff next week. Uh, if I can get a good, a couple of good nights sleep, and then. Because uh, I've been normally can get in, woke up at about four ish, and and then I I go back try to get an extra couple hours, and then get up at about seven. Um, so yeah, oh Arch is coming. Say hello, Arch, come here. Come on, come on Arch. What have you got on your face? It's it. Oh. What is it? But yeah. Uh, yeah. You listen to me for once. He's talking. What are you doing, mate? Are you, are you leaner than daddy? Right. Well, he ain't got top genetics, has he? I'm a baker. He doesn't drink Stella either. Hey. Oh, yeah. Right. I'm a baker. <laughs> right. <I'm> <laughs> You're going to get down after me. Let's say. Come on. Come on, get down. No. Come on. Down. Right, see you in the uh, next video.